In this segment, we're going to look at specific sites of ski areas. We've been looking at sort of a regional and statewide uh, level of analysis with some local uh, analysis, but let's, t let's turn right now to uh, particular ski areas. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here. I'm going to turn off my uh, highways because it just takes a little while to draw the traffic counts that I've got. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on specific ski areas. Let's take a look at uh, right over here of, uh, of one of the ski famous ski areas of Colorado, um, Aspen uh, Snowmass. And uh, notice that these ski areas are definitely uh, in mountainous areas as we've, as we've seen. Close, a lot of them are close to Continental Divide. Um, but oftentimes these are on north facing slopes. Now get the students to think about what kind of slope, what direction of slope uh, are best for ski areas? And certainly the first thing that probably comes to mind is that steeper the better. But actually if you're trying to cater your ski area to a wide variety of skill levels, uh, like mine for example, uh, tend to, I definitely tend to be f to, to the greens and blues, uh, then you want a wide variety of terrain. You don't want the whole thing to be steep unless you're going to just cater as uh, Arapaho Basin and a few others do to the more advanced ski area uh, to the more advanced skiers uh, but so so slope the, the the degree of slope is important um, on the other hand you don't want it to be too steep right you can't locate these things on a cliff so get the students to think about you know what's the ideal ski slope uh, for you know X percent of your terrain do you want X percent to be a 30 percent slope do you want it to be 20 percent slope uh, how much um, of your terrain do you want to be blacks? Uh, what amount of terrain do you want to be blues? And what amount of terrain do you want to be uh, greens? Uh, also, you need to think about where your ski uh, lifts are going to be located, right? You've got to have certain areas that you're going to be able to plant those poles for the, uh, for the, for the supports for the ski lifts to get those skier, skiers to the top of your mountain. Okay, so these are all important considerations. Another important consideration, though, since ski areas are based on snow, obviously, is uh, where that snow is going to persist longer. Get them to think about uh, the tilt of the Earth's axis. So go back to your discussion on Earth-Sun relationships and how the Earth is tilted on its axis by 23 and a half or so uh, degrees. And because of that, we have summer and winter, right? We have spring and fall. We've got seasons. Now get them to think about the angle of sun in the winter time versus the summer time. In the northern hemisphere, the sun is always a little bit south of straight overhead, correct? Now in the southern hemisphere, get them to think about that the sun is a little bit north of straight overhead, unless you were at the equator, of course, or along uh, in the tropics, uh, where it actually does become straight overhead at certain times of the year. Now up here in Colorado, for example, the sun is always going to be a little bit south of straight overhead. Especially in the winter, the sun is going to have a, uh, a, a greater angle, right? It's going to be lower in the sky. Uh, but no matter what time of year that the sun shines in Colorado or in the northern hemisphere, it's going to be shining uh, basically from the south, more so than from the north. And so the angle of uh, slope is going to be affected. Okay, so draw this on the board. Get them to think about a slope that faces north is never going to be under direct sunlight uh, in, in the northern hemisphere, especially at the latitude that Colorado is, okay, which is basically from 37 degrees north latitude to 41 degrees north latitude. Um, so the slopes that are going to hold snow longer are going to be the north facing slopes just because they by their very nature do not receive direct sunlight. Now with your GIS test that hypothesis. Are most of these, could you tell that they're on north facing slopes? Well Aspen Highlands, uh, Aspen Mountain, Snowmass, they're all on these slopes that face north. And to test that you might want to turn on your rivers. Right? We looked at that earlier. Let's go ahead and bump up the river size. Right? What did I do? I just clicked on the line that under rivers and then I just bumped up the width. Okay, so why am I doing that for rivers? I turn on the rivers because get the students to getting the students to think about how these things look in three dimensions uh, is important in this in this example in this part of our activity. So if if these rivers are flowing this way, right? And how do I determine that? Well, zoom out a little bit. 
turn off your shaded relief for the moment. If these rivers are starting here, they're flowing toward the northwest, right? They can't flow this way and stop, right? Colorado is a high state, right? Rocky Mountain High, right? It's Colorado. So they're flowing downhill from all these high elevations. And so therefore, the rivers are flowing down toward the northwest, okay? Now, another way you could do that is you could double, you could click on the symbol and you could actually make it an arrow. Ooh, let's do that. Yeah, a blue arrow, how about? Maybe with a, a black end is fine. Blue, blue, uh, blue arrow with a black tip. Let's go ahead and change that. Okay, well, unfortunately, the way that these rivers were encoded, uh, the, that doesn't work. That doesn't work very well because some of these rivers were actually digitized onto the computer uh, in reverse order. So they actually point uphill. So let's go ahead and skip that. Um, but the point is that you can get the students to visualize that these, these rivers are flowing down toward the northwest. Therefore, the ski areas are on these slopes. If, if this river is flowing north, this is a north-facing slope. Go ahead and turn back on your shaded relief. Now, in the next segment, we're going to look at this in three dimensions, so it'll be a little clearer. But even in two dimensions here, what we want the students to think about is, OK, if I'm going to locate a ski area, it's, it's ideal to be on the north-facing slope. Now, northwest is OK. North or northeast is OK. South facing slope, well, I could do that, uh, but it's, it's going to be in the path of more direct sunlight uh, just because of the nature of the slope and the way the sun's shining on it in, in the wintertime. So that it's, 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 it's not going to hold its snow. So between snowstorms, it's going to melt too much, and people aren't going to want to ski on my ski area uh, as much if, if I'm going to have rocks and stuff showing through and shrubs and things like that. So you want that snowpack to be as high as possible. More about that in the next segment. But thinking about the local terrain for ski areas is another spatial thinking uh, kind of activity that you, can, that you can use GIS to bring out in a powerful way.